next, we have our number one income earner, <laughs> Julie Stevens. She's going to talk to you guys about leadership, about mindset. She's going to give you the whole rundown. So everybody welcome Julie Stevens. <laughs> I just told my sister sitting next to me, I said, I'm freezing, but my hands are so sweaty. Oh, um, thank you guys for coming today. Give it up for Sarah Reed. She did all this. She's amazing. This, this Super Saturday gets me so fired up, and your business is built from event or at events, really. It's built from event to event, but whenever you go to these events, it really, really sticks in your business. So don't miss the next one, because you will hear something new from somebody else. But um, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about myself today, because you guys can read all about that on the internet, <laughs> since it's like everywhere. Um, I share my story quite a bit, but I basically started broke with two checking accounts in the hole, and I went to having my fortune in three years. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Um, my, my dream car is sitting outside right now. My dream car from 10 years ago, you guys, when I was broke, did not ever think I would ever have a car like that. It's sitting out there. And then my dream house, I close on it in seven days. Like, it's so neat. But um, I'm very, very thankful for this opportunity. And for every single one of you guys in here, you guys are important. And that's the most thing that I want you guys to know this whenever you walk away from this today is you are important. And there's Anna. Hi. That's my cousin. My cousin. I haven't seen her yet. Um, I want to talk a little bit about personal development today and investing in yourself. So first off right away, I'm going to give you guys some book recommendations. This is homework for the next several years. My favorite color or favorite book is one of them is The Four Color Personalities of MLM by Al Schreider. Sometimes they call him Big Al. It's one of my favorite books. There's a lot of personality books out there. This one caters really well to us. And whenever you read it, the first time's not going to do it for you more than likely. So read it several times over and over because you'll pick up something new every time you read a book, the same book. So read the same book over and over until it all catches on. Um, that book will teach you how to communicate with other people in your industry. GoPro by Eric Worre. Who's, heard, who's read this one? Awesome. Who saw him in February? Woo! Oh, hear this little. <laughs> um, the Magic of Thinking Big. David Schwartz wrote that one. That's one of my favorites. How Successful People Lead by John Maxwell. And Anything by John Maxwell. Just buy it. It's amazing. Um, that Successful People Lead, that book, I'll tell you guys this. I read it five times before I learned a thing, so read it five times, at least. Six, um, How Successful People Think is also another one by him, and if you guys are ever at the airport, they have little books about this big. You can buy John Maxwell books at the airport and read them on the plane. Probably by the time you fly there and fly back, you'll have it done. Um, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. For those of you guys who really toot around and don't get things done. Icebreakers by Tom Schreider. That's a good one to break the ice with people. And that's all the books that I have for you guys today. So go and read these over and over and over and don't overwhelm yourself with a lot of books at one time. Target one and learn something and then take it away and apply it before you pick up the next book. But I dig into personal development every single day because it builds who you are and it builds who you're going to be in the future. So one thing I will tell you guys, Every morning, every day, somehow, you know, a lot of people have their miracle morning minute um, where they, you know, speak affirmations into their life, see what needs to get done. Don't check on your phone whenever you first wake up. Do the things that you need to do to get your stuff accomplished first. So leadership is something, leader, leadership is something that I feel like I should not be up here talking about because it's like the, the biggest topic of all topics. And I feel so insignificant to stand up here before you guys and talk about it, but some of the things that I have learned is that you're continuously growing, you're never at the top. So whenever you guys do t um, tap into that one book, How Successful People Lead, you guys are never at the level five. You guys now will know what I'm talking about whenever you get to that book, I bet you guys are excited to read it now. But level five, you guys are never there, so stay within the first four steps of those books and you guys will be okay in your business, which make, basically puts you in the trenches and always leading by example from the, for, from the forefront. But a few things about leadership. 
I read this from a amazing leader. Have you guys ever heard of Life Church? Some of you guys may have. A few of you guys have. Craig Rochelle actually has a leadership podcast, and I highly recommend you guys tuning into that. Something that he wrote or had a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to read this and quote it because it's so good I don't have to reinvent it. This is about firing your inner boss. A boss compared to leaders. A boss is going to instill fear. A leader inspires confidence. You guys want to be leaders, not bosses. We are not in this business to tell people what to do. We're here to show them how to do it. A boss is going to assign the blame. And a leader is someone who's going to take responsibility and try to fix issues. So whenever somebody comes to you in your organization or maybe outside of your organization, maybe they're not in Monet. Someone, there's two different types of people. There's some people who are going to blame other people, but there's the other type who's going to find solutions and mastermind with those people who brought it to them. So whenever people in your organization come to you, mastermind with them. Some of the best ideas I've ever had came from her or her or her or her. So I mastermind with all of my team and I try to learn from other people. A leader, a leader <laughs> hold on, that's not the right one. A boss demands loyalty and a leader extends trust. So what does that mean? A boss will tell you, you've got to be loyal to me, you know, and it'll assign tasks and expect you to have these things. But leaders go without expecting results. They're just going to go and lead by example because leaders will have people follow them. So if you guys see something that someone else is doing and it seems to be working, follow them. Do exactly what they're doing. A boss will control people. And one thing you're going to have to compromise if you're a controlling person is your growth. If you're controlling things, you're not going to be able to grow. You can't keep a tight grip on everything. You've got to have a little bit of looseness and be able to be open to your business. The biggest lesson I ever learned was actually I came to Dallas one time and I was at a leadership thing. And this guy stood up on stage and he wrote, I know everything on this big clipboard. And he put a big circle around it and an X. And he said, the second you feel like you know everything, you are shutting your mind off from learning. So this is something that you guys need to continuously be involved in is your personal development and digging to be the person that you want to be. And you can never compare yourself with who you are. The other, like if a market mentor stands up over here and an SED stands up over here or something, vice versa, you guys can't compare yourself with the other person across the room. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know their experiences. You don't know what they sacrificed. And I will tell you, it takes sacrifices in this business, but the payoff is well worth it for as long as you want it to be. <clears throat> Bosses are guarded and leaders are transparent and vulnerable. So one thing that I'm pretty good at is being vulnerable because I don't have filters. I don't know how to shade <laughs> the fact that I'm nervous. I let people know I'm nervous about speaking in front of people. Um, every time I go live, you guys, who, who has to pump themselves up before they go live? Like for reals, I'm like, we're going to do this. And then I almost touch the button. I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> that does not help. <laughs> More cameras. Oh my gosh. So you've got to be transparent and be yourself. People will relate to you. They won't relate to a box or a robot. So even though like the dare to succeed is there, the onboarding is there, you be yourself and don't be afraid of failing. Just go out there and take risks and take chances. So one thing I'm going to have you guys write this down. This is goal setting. I wanted to cover this. It wasn't even in my topic until this morning. So I wrote this down in the car. I'm so good on time. Okay. Goal setting. <clears throat> this is called SMART goals and it's an acronym. So write S-M-A-R-T. Um, does anyone in here set goals? You guys set goals, right? Has anyone in here not ever set a goal? And if you're new, raise your hand if you've never set a goal. I want to know who I'm talking to and trying to discipline here. So goal setting is one of the biggest things that you could be leaving out in your business that will keep you from going forward. So S stands for specific. Be specific in your goals. Where are you going? What rank? Is it a Mo neighborhood or a block you're running for this month? Be specific and write it down. If you guys like journals, don't like journals, any way you can, if it's on your notepad, on your phone, write this stuff down and do not ever throw it away. You do want to go back and log, just like what Jennifer Wardlaw said. You go back and you see the things that you wrote. You like to see and that's how you measure things, which the next word is measure. M stands for measure. So you have to measure where you have gone in the past several weeks. Someone asked me the other day, how do you, 
how do you um, evaluate your success after a Super Saturday? Like, do you guys have a lot of sign-ups at the Meet Monate? And obviously, you guys can see no one hardly raises their hand. However, these Meet Monates and Super Saturdays do impact your business a ton. So if you guys didn't sign up through a Meet Monate, more than likely you're here today because you went to one. You're still here today because you went to one or you went to a Super Saturday. So don't leave out the events. But you have to measure your goal. So that way you can see where you are today, where you were three months ago, and then the action that, that you did in between the time and what results you have. So after Super Saturdays, I measure the Super Saturdays by do they plan on having another one? And can people, do people there feel like they can do it too? If we come up here and do a Super Saturday that's not duplicatable to you guys, you guys wouldn't be able to go to your areas and do that for yourself. So we stick with really basic topics and don't be complicated and um, go from there. A stands for achievable and obtainable. <laughs> this means don't put on there that you wanna make $50,000 your first month. Cause I'll be like, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> so achievable is something that $200 can change somebody's life. $500, a car payment, that kind of stuff can change somebody's life. So if somebody writes that down, you better be excited. Got to be really pumped up for whatever they put down. And it's got to be achievable in a realistic measure. So it can't be something that's ridiculous. So just remember that. Realistic goes along with the same thing. So the R stands for realistic. Something that's not absurd and ridiculous. And timely. T stands for timely. This is the one that really hit me because I had people and I did it too. So obviously it was duplicating throughout my team. I had people tell me I want to quit my job next summer. Okay, when? Next summer. No, like what day? What time? What time of day do you want it to be when you go in there and fire your boss? Like I need to know. <laughs> I remember when you did it, that was exciting. So you have to say if it's this. You did it in the bathroom? That's when I had my meetings. You had you was having meetings in the bathroom. So you can do your business anywhere, y'all. Like for reals. But no pun intended. But your time has to be a deadline. If you're not writing down your deadline, just don't even write at all. Don't. Write down exactly what day you're going to quit your job. Exactly what day you're going to hit that rank. Exactly what day you're going to have those four VIPs settled. If you don't write the exact day, midnight, or most of us, it's 10.59 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. It's got to be at 10.59 p.m., not 11.02. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we're all guilty, right? So that's something that you guys really got to remember to do. And you guys can train, train this to your team, right? So leadership is about learning something and applying it and going out and teaching somebody else to do things better. And another thing is, is if you guys feel like maybe your leader is not doing all the things that you're hoping they would do, or maybe you're not getting out of them what you really, really feel like you need, guess what? This is your opportunity to take everything that's good from that leader and you can step it up and be a better one. Woo! I really like that because I had to learn by my own experiences. Not, my uplines are not gonna do my business for me. I am responsible for my own business. So you have to do the things that you want and you have to write down what you want and then measure it and make sure that you do it. So that's basically what I wanna talk about. I'm really going through this fast. Okay. I wish I had really, really inspiring stuff. I mostly just had notes, but I'm gonna leave you guys with a few F words. <laughs> Sounds really bad. And my, my favorite F word is faith. So whenever you get started in this business or whenever you first hear about this business, it's really scary. It's really scary. When I first got introduced to this business, I was in another network marketing company and my mother was my upline. <laughs> and that residual that she was getting every month was paying the bills. Like, it was, that was her income. And I had to respectfully come over to this company. So I didn't tell anybody in my organization, didn't tell anybody. And I was so terrified because I couldn't see the results that were going to happen. I just heard about what could possibly happen. And so if I didn't have a little bit of faith, I don't think that I would have taken that first step. But they say that if you have the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you guys, you guys have all seen a mustard seed. That's tiny. That's like pretty much non-existent. You have something that's almost just fraction above non-existent. 
that's enough faith that can carry you this. And I swear, that's all I had. And that's all I've had. Because I don't know how this happened. A year ago, I did a Super Saturday with Sarah and Jennifer Caldwell. And Christy Deer was there, too. And, and Victoria. Victoria? Right. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and then this first row and the second row, that we could have filled those. and probably still had some empty chairs. That was it. One year ago, that's all we had here. And whenever I first started, guess who was in my business the day I signed up? Me. It was a one-man army. You have to start, everyone starts at the bottom. And so as you start climbing in this business, you start to realize that it's working. You're like, oh my gosh, it's working. And for those of you guys that it's not working for, the other F word is failure is okay. If you don't fail over and over and over again, there's no way you can get better. The only reason why I got better is because I fell flat on my face so hard I thought I had a flat nose. Like, it was horrible, you guys. I went through the worst pain I could have ever experienced in a business. It was because it was myself. I had created my goal. Does that work? Oh, this one's heavier. That was great. So, um, where was I? <laughs> Right. Failure. You fell down. Yeah, yeah. So it's really, really tough. <laughs> so when you're going along in this business, be okay to fail. And leaders, lead your team and allow them to fail. That's something that a lot of people do is hover over their people and say, hey, did you get your people? Did you call people today? You know what? You guys, you cannot make anybody want this. They have to want it for themselves. The only thing you can do is inspire them and encourage them and lead the way. And they will follow, which is another F word. And so that's, I have a lot of F words today. <laughs> but you follow the fun. So if someone's having fun and you're a little kid, you're at recess, who do you hang out with, pouty kids or the fun kids? You go after the fun kids. Have a childlike mind in this business. You don't need to know a whole lot. You don't even need to know what market builder is, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> to be very successful. You know, that's my favorite thing is whenever people are like, you're like, you hit the rink, and they're like, what is it? <laughs> you hit him and beat. What's that? <laughs> I, that's my favorite. So kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Like you've got it. Actually, I like it to keep it simple. Stupidly simple, let's do that. Stupidly simple, because I don't like to call you guys stupid. So keep it really, really simple. And Eric Worre, I believe, is the one who said this. If you're onboarding and launching somebody into their business, you know, like brand new, we call it onboarding here in our company. But if it's not ridiculously simple, they're gonna stay right here. If you make it really, really simple for people, they do do really well. And the same thing goes for your organization. So my second year in business, I was already at the top of the company, but I started failing. My residual dropped 20 grand, or 20%, sorry, not 20 grand. That sounds bad, that sounds really bad. But my residual dropped 20% after I hit the top of the company. So I was failing again, even at the top. I had to take risks and I had to start leading my own team by my own example. I had to start recruiting again because that's what we want people to do, right? We want people to stay in the trenches. One market partner can change anything in your business. One person can change the life of your whole business. I'll never forget the day I tried so hard to get Sarah Reed involved. You know, so, and here she is today. She's a senior executive director, but I was so scared that she would not sign up. I was afraid that what she would think of me. And whenever I just went ahead and did it, even though I was scared, I remember laying on my bed, you guys, and seeing her profile, going through it, and I was like, I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. And then Josh comes in, and I was like, look at her face. I was like, she's so beautiful. I'm gonna get her. And I just kept saying that over and over, and I didn't send any messages. I was like, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I finally managed up the courage, and it wasn't the first time that I talked to her that she was even willing to talk to me. You know, it took several exposures. So if you guys are visiting with somebody about this opportunity, it does take four to six exposures to normally get them on board, so don't forget that. Um, so what I said about fun, you know, follow the fun. Follow where people are enjoying themselves, because if you're not having fun in your business, there's no way I would join you, right? And if you ever think about what are the skills, what are the qualities, that you want in a leader. 
yes, you could do this for market partners too, this activity, but let's talk about leadership here for a second. What do you want in an upline? Write it all down and think about it tonight. And then at the end, this has got to be you. You've got to be all those qualities because that's what this is about. And so build up other people so they can be up here on stage because there's no way that I could have led Sarah's organization. It's huge, it's huge. So Sarah's got, she's a leader and she's got leaders. And so it's, you guys, we're all a puzzle piece and I say this all the time, everyone's a puzzle piece. You've gotta have everybody else to have the whole picture. So make sure that you're utilizing other people for what they're good at while you're encouraging them to continue to grow. So, um, I still have five minutes left. I'm gonna think of something good here. No, I'm just kidding. So, by overcoming your fear, by utilizing faith, right? Follow the fun, and that's gonna lead you to your fortune and your freedom. Because this business can offer you anything that you want. However, you probably are not in a position where you wanna be today, right? Everybody wants to be that next rank. Um, Dina Solomon had a training the other day on her Facebook. You guys have gotta go watch it, it's amazing. And she talks about how do you compare success and happiness? Like, think about your next rank that you want right now. And this is all coming from Dina. I'm probably gonna say it wrong where she, she should just come up here and say it, it was so good. <laughs> but think about your next rank. Now think about how happy you're gonna be whenever you hit that next rank. Well, a year down the road, you're not gonna be that rank, right? You're, that happiness doesn't come to you from that last rank. So how do you find happiness? Happiness is developing yourself. It's going through those errors. It's failing on your face. It's laughing with your friend about getting some lady calling you crazy because you offered her samples in the bathroom. You know, this stuff is fun and funny. It's totally cool. But you've gotta be willing to go out of your comfort zone and expand it. So as you're growing yourself, you're gonna learn these things. A year down the road, I want you guys to look back at who you are today and be so proud of how much that you have grown how much your business has grown because you have grown. Because your business will only grow as much as you grow personally. So if you guys want a bigger paycheck, you have to invest in yourself. One time I heard this speech or something, I can't remember what it was, but a man asked the guy, you know, how do you earn the paychecks that you're earning? He was making six figures a year. And the guy said, I read a book once a month. And a couple years later he said, what are you doing now? Because you're making six figures a month. And he says, I read a book a week. You've got to start putting stuff in your head that you want to start projecting out. And guess what? A bad mood can be turned around real quick by listening to some personal development. You can listen to music. You can do calls in the car. You can do personal development. Choose which one that you want for the results that you want at the end of the day. So if you're writing down your goals, you guys will know what you want, right? So write down and don't be afraid to dream bigger. Everything that you write down for an achievable goal, I want you to write something 10 times bigger than that, and that's your dream, right? Think about your crazy dreams. I never in my wildest dreams would have ever thought that I'd be building my dream house. Like, that just, that doesn't happen for people like me, you know? But what's crazy is that I used to think that I didn't deserve this. I used to think that I wasn't worthy. I used to think that success doesn't happen for people like me. Someone else had to tell me if you start treating yourself that way, the rest of your team will too. And so I have to tell myself, we earned this. We signed up for this business because we know the payoff is great. We know that the joy is abundant and we know that we can give back to other people, which is worth more than even any paycheck that you could ever imagine. So that's what we sign up for. So whenever you guys get your paychecks, feel it, feel it. When I, this summer when I got one of my really big ones, I literally walked outside, couldn't even talk to my husband, couldn't look at him. I don't think he had any words either if there were anything to say. I like walked outside and I sat over by my air conditioning unit on the side of the house. I literally cried for two hours because I was able to give money to some other family and it didn't affect us whatsoever. I still bought my dream car, I'm still closing on my house. I'm able to give more. So money isn't everything, but if you're able to help someone else who doesn't have it, it is everything for them. So what I really don't like is people telling you what to do all the time. 
people giving you limitations. In this business, you don't have to have people telling you what to do because they're showing you the way. You've got leaders, and if you want someone else's paycheck, follow what they do. Chase them, do exactly what they do. You're gonna feel a little flimsy, you're gonna feel a little awkward, but fail over and over and over again. Just never give up. Just please don't give up. If you have bad days and you feel like giving up, talk to somebody. Just reach out to your upline. Sarah and I, she's gonna talk about this, we've had some hard calls, really difficult calls. And my other team members have done the same thing. But you know what, you guys deserve this. Every single one of you guys deserve this. God's called you out to do something greater in life. And right now you've got this opportunity, you've got this platform, you've got the vehicle. All you gotta do is drive. All you gotta do is put the car in gear and just drive. And I promise this company has your back 110% every single time. So the product, it'll back you up. The compensation plan, it's the best, yes. But what people are gonna sign up and why they're signing up is because of you. It's because of you and what you feel and how you believe in things. So if you believe in this company and if you believe in yourself, then everybody else is sold and that's all that you need, I promise. So that's all I have. And I'm, you guys are in for a huge treat because your senior executive director, Sarah Reed, is coming up to talk to you guys. So everybody give her an amazing round of applause. So she's going, she's going to also talk to you guys about leadership today. And some of the best trainings I've ever heard has come out of this girl's mouth. So take notes. Thank you, Julie. How's everybody doing?